Pumpkin, where are you hunting back there? I don't like when you do that, Pumpkin. You get me all paranoid. There's creepy things going on back there, Pumpkin. Where are you going, Pumpkin? Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. Almost just fell flat on the ground. Sorry, I'm boring you, Toby. My bad. Toby, just the normal ball of relentless energy that he always is. Not so much. I don't really have anything to vlog about. I mean, I guess I do. It's just stuff I don't feel like doing. I got some stuff I need to do in the growth space. We'll probably do that soon. Otherwise, just life, wrapping presents, doing some cleaning. Things are weird around here, as you could probably imagine. Fish tank, still be in a fish tank. Oh, I did a thing, though. Nervous energy decorating. I had my set up a. So look at, isn't it beautiful? Might help if you could actually see. Look, so much color and so much loveliness. I have all of these fish ornaments. My mother used to get me a fish ornament every single Christmas, and uh, I made it. Did that make it sound like she's dead? She's not. She just, I don't know, hasn't done it in a long time. And I don't like them on my big tree, so I got a little tree to put them on. But these ornaments, they're too big. Like that just, it looks dumb. So I decided to hang those up with some clear string and they're not leveled out quite right. I just sort of stuck them up there. I was mostly just trying to keep myself occupied. I do like it though. They're very pretty ornaments. Very pretty and delicate ornaments that are just hanging up by a tiny string on command hooks. So hopefully that doesn't all come tumbling down and shattering on the ground. Uh, I never showed y'all the new tree because remember back in October I was like, oh, I need a new tree, but I wasn't going to bore you with it. Well, I got one. And I set it up in October because it came in the mail in October. It didn't make sense to me to go ahead and put it down into the... Oh, shoot. Wrong button. Wrong button. Wrong button. Stop. So I pushed the wrong button. It's not, like, lit up all that well. And it's a little bit crooked. I need to figure out how to straighten that out. Problem with this room is if you put a nine-foot tree in here, the angel doesn't fit or star, whatever goes on top, doesn't fit. And a seven-and-a-half-foot tree isn't big enough for all the ornaments. This tree... Look at this. Yeah. You see that? It goes up and down. You can adjust the height. That might be easier to see from back here. Yeah, so it shrinks down from seven and a half feet and then goes up to nine and, or just nine feet. Isn't that fun? Totally pointless, but nifty. See how long that works too though. I feel like that might break fairly quickly. And I got that from Sam. So the price was pretty good. Lime tree doing okay. Hey, starting to green back up and making sure to give it a little bit of nitrogen and with its water because I think that that was a big part of the problem there. It wasn't chlorosis, it was just a common problem, nitrogen. Lime tree is covered in flowers. It has buds all over it and they smell so good in the morning. Pro tip though, don't stick your face in a plant full of thorns. <laughs> Made that mistake the other day. It's going to be really, really hard for me to go ahead and take down this Christmas stuff. It's so fun and colorful. I'm very much enjoying having all the color in the house. I will probably leave the lights up because you can switch them. Where's the remote? So it can set them to being just a single color. And I don't, well, I don't, I don't know why it's doing that. I don't have all the commands figured out on here yet because they're just numbers. So it's like, how do I keep straight? What's what? It, originally one and two on here were just different shades of white, but then they started randomly changing i think five was the one that changes co excuse me is that changing colors no yes i don't think so eight maybe it was eight. Oh, <laughs> that's definitely not it but i kind of love it six there we go that's good anyways my whole point was um, I will be sad to take all this down, but I might leave the lights up and just not have them on all the time. I need to get these orchids hung up. This is a problem with this particular grower, Moats. Uh, if you're into orchids, you've probably heard of them. They have really nice, vandacious orchids for the most part, but they never include the hangers. And these really, like, they should be hanging up. Like these right here, they're, they're on hangers. So I always forget if I order from this particular grower that I also need to make sure that I have something to hang them up with. You can use wire coat hangers, I just don't have any. I've just used regular wire and made them myself before. That worked, but it was a little bit wonky. And since I don't have a ton of them anymore, I prefer to just use the ones that are made for them. All right, we can go out to the garage and do plant things now. The problem is there's just not that many plant things to do right now. I have my temperatures fairly low and cool because I don't have the plastic up out here. And then while all the Christmas lights are on outdoors, I can't run the heaters enough to keep it like super toasty in here. 
and that's it's never been a problem i'd make sure it stays like between 55 and 65 and just i'm very careful with the watering and it's always been okay i don't have anything in here that's going to throw a huge fit over something like that except for well the heliconias don't really appreciate it and um the coconut palms they, they, they don't like it either i feel like i'm forgetting something oh the likuala palm i don't have that anymore that didn't survive 2020 how to play it to be taken care of by beginners they're, they're kind of challenging pretty sure i talked about that in the last q a i do have a ginger that you can kind of see underneath the shelf there on the other side of the pond it's an alpinia zerumbit variegata uh it's not doing great over there i think that end of the garage is just a little bit too cool for it i've been trying to keep it water and everything but it's still just it keeps on closing up and weeping down which usually means the, a few different things it can mean that the plant's being overwatered and things are too cool and not enough light or any combination of those things or that can happen from too much light which that's not the problem back there or just bad temperatures humidity there's like a whole bunch of different things that can cause that problem uh, it's also very possible that i need to repot it but that would not be a smart thing to do with the cooler temperatures it won't be that long though pretty soon i'll have the plastic up in here and it'll be much warmer i think it was like 76 in here today anyways what i was going to say is i was thinking i might move that ginger over to this side and have it right here this is just i mean it's trash it's just stuff i need to put away or throw away into recycling maybe let's do that i don't know i'm trying here I, this doesn't seem like something that's vlog worthy though yeah it's not looking too good is it it's just it's thirsty she's a very very thirsty ginger i have it raised up to make sure that it's not pulling up any coolness from the ground because i don't have the ground insulated right in this spot this is probably the warmest spot in here right now but ultimately i'm pretty sure it just it needs a new pot and it's gonna have to wait a couple weeks because it's just i don't want to repot it until it's consistently warm in here otherwise it could have some big issues with root rot i did go ahead and dump like maybe two gallons about two and a half gallons of water in there so we'll see what happens but i don't expect much because like i said really needs a new pot i'll check up on that in the morning holy freaking beautiful morning like what does this say 52 not that you can see that 52 degrees that is a very nice improvement it has been so cold lately I mean, like normal winter cold actually it has been a little bit dramatic it hasn't been terrible but it's supposed to get to be fairly chilly 16 degrees coming up here in just a few days so i'm gonna have to probably move a few more plants inside maybe i don't know the all that's really left out there are the mule palms which you might be able to see through the shears you can kind of see them out there you can't really see them and there's the windmill palms also i'll probably bring those in or at least lay them down and cover them up just to be safe but the ones on the front porch there no they've never felt a winter before so with these i'll just take them and just scoot them in the house because it's only for a couple nights so it's not really a big deal man those need to be watered badly very very badly hi toby hey tubs how you doing Still haven't gotten these set up which means they haven't been watered and like um i'm not gonna tell you how long because i don't even know i'll handle that now what you doing bud what you doing good boy toby did you think we were gonna go play in the front yard we don't do that anymore i'm sorry toby for a while it was hard for tucker to get out the back door so we were going out the front and toby thought that was so much fun you don't need to do that toby you got a big fenced in backyard to enjoy let's go check on the ginger okay this is definitely a plant that needs to be repotted the leaves slightly started to open up this is not what this plant is supposed to look like during the winter time it can be more complicated when you're dealing with a situation where it's should i repot the plant or just wait in this situation I think waiting might be a pretty bad idea because if I can't get water to the plant, if it's become so incredibly root bound that two and a half gallons of water into that little 10 inch pot isn't enough to rehydrate it, then it's going to die. So then the question becomes, do I want the plant to die from dehydration or from potential root rot from repotting it during the time of year where it's not necessarily ideal? Since this space is heated and it will be quite toasty in here fairly soon, I'm not that concerned about going ahead and maybe just bumping it up just just a smidge just enough to get some fresh soil around the roots something to hold on to some water because clearly this isn't working out and temperature is also something really important to keep in mind like I said yesterday it was about 76 in here right now it's about 74 
it's going to probably push 80 in here today and that's more than warm enough for this plant to be moving actively for there to be that transport of water and nutrient from the root up into the foliage to get the leaves to open up and to have the plant growing. But sometimes, oftentimes, actually, when the leaf curl's going on like this, that can really just be because temperatures aren't warm enough for the plant to be metabolizing, essentially. Their plant metabolism is all slowed down from things being cold. And that risk of root rot gets high again because you water the plant and then the water just sits there around the roots of the plant. And then there's rot, but I don't think that's going to be a problem here, not with this one. Things are warm enough. There's about enough light I can scoot a grow light over here. Not all the lights have come on yet. The temperatures are good enough that it should be able to flush out. So I'll go ahead and bump this up just one pot size. Just just barely, just a smidge. Hey, at least it's nice outside so I can repot this outdoors and not make a huge mess in here. That's kind of nice. Yeah, I didn't film the repot and everything. I've done a whole video on repotting these alpinias. I don't maybe it was last summer something like that I'll link it down below didn't really see a reason to go over all that information again but there's some kind of bizarre I don't is that a hammer I don't know this is the closest thing I could find that was just a smidge larger than the root mass and the original root mass on the plant and it works fine like I said I didn't want to bump it up too much there's only about maybe half an inch of soil in the bottom so that should help prevent things from getting too waterlogged down there. Ideally, things are going to be warm enough in the grow space this winter that I hopefully won't even have to worry much about root rot. But it's just, you know, bad time of year for repotting, whether it's warm or not. It should be fine, should be safe, but like I said, it's still a little bit of a gamble. With these alpinias, they, in my opinion, huge pain in the butt to keep as a house plant. I do not like having these in my house. In the grow space, in that garage, Kind of a different story because it's nice and warm in there maybe if you have an atrium sunroom something like that that's nice and toasty for them but getting the watering right on these can be tricky at normal household temperatures so if they get just a little bit too much water then they start to rot and that's such a pain to deal with and there's always issues with the leaves staying curled that's one of the most common questions i get actually is about leaves curling on their gingers and bird of paradise. I should probably just do a video about that. Tried to cut off as much of the dead leaves as I could, but I didn't, you can see I missed a few. Like I could probably go ahead and get this one off of there. What I am waiting on though is getting in here and really pulling all the brown stuff out from the inside just because like, I mean, we can tell, look at that. Clear to see here that this plant is very stressed out and uh, probably pretty weak. So I don't wanna be tugging and pulling too much just because that can lead to bruising. You can kind of see, I just smacked my camera. There's like you can see there's a little brown mark kind of you can sort of see it on the stem here i don't want to exacerbate the problem here i'll give it a couple weeks and see how it's looking and then can get in there because these pieces that are down low you really kind of have to tug at them pretty hard to get them out of there and i think this poor thing's been through enough for right now so sorry waited too long to repot it that happens sometimes well that looks so much better doesn't it maybe not no the alpinias i don't normally i think i already yeah, I talked about this. I don't try and keep them looking very pretty during the winter. We'll see what happens this year because things should be warmer in here than they normally are and I have a few more grow lights than I used to. But usually they get kind of spindly, kind of sad looking. I water them at like an extreme minimum, but I also normally keep them on the cold side of the garage so they're more just kind of dormant and hanging out. Whereas this year it's going to be warmer. I'm going to give it a shot, see what happens. If it's not looking great, then I'll go ahead and bump it over to the other side of the garage, which is the over behind all these plants where things are a lot more cool and can just rest and relax for the winter time. Only thing I didn't mention that when I do a video on leaf curl, well, it's just a dead leaf. There's a curled leaf up there. When I get a video done on that, something that I'll be talking about is that using heat tape is always an option if you're struggling with one of these in the house and it's just not doing great. Then you can wrap the pot with a heat tape. Just make sure that the whatever product you buy, whatever type of heat tape that is, that it says whether or not it's safe to use it on a plastic container. If it's not, you might need to move the plant to something that's ceramic. And there are heat cables you can even wrap around the root mass when you pop the plants. You can give those a shot as well. And that'll help keep things warmer and toastier for the plant and keep them going. I think that's like really taking things to a whole nother level. But if it's what you gotta do, it's what you gotta do. Who knows, We've done some pretty crazy things with our plants, like gutting your garage and putting a pond in it. 
Yeah, I'm not one to judge on doing extreme things for our suppliants. I got a new heater. Just, I know that's not the most exciting news ever, but I actually really like it. It's been working wonderfully, except for some reason it it, it turned off last night. I'm not sure. Wait, what's the problem? Oh, I unplugged this. I did. This was my problem. I did this. It completely forgot that I had to unplug the heater to plug in the new humidifier, which I'll show you at the end of the video. Love the new humidifier or humidifying system that I'm doing out here. It works very, very well. And I do really like this heater. Anyways, though, new heater. And I think that this might be like my favorite one I've ever had. It actually warms up very quickly and it's not drying the air out a lot. I mean, it dries out a little bit, but not a ton. Doesn't matter. It didn't end up getting very cold in here last night. I did get a new uh, thingy, one of these little smart sensors. Here it is right here. It's the Govi Wi-Fi and it has Bluetooth and it just links up to an app in my phone and I can set a range for temperature and humidity. And if the temperature or humidity falls outside of that range, then it'll send an alert to my phone. Which is awesome. That's something I've wanted to get out here for a while. I had a system a few years ago. I want to say, I don't think it was made by Lacrosse. I can't remember who made it. Whoever it was, they sold to a different company. It was just the little plastic sensors. You could use them indoors or out. And I had like 10 different sensors. So I had them outside all around the garden. I had them inside and they all went into their own little program. And like there were graphs and charts. It was really neat to look at. But the company sold, and when they sold, the software just stopped working. And I didn't want to spend, like, $100 on something else when I didn't have... I used... Okay, background. I used to have greenhouses and things outside around palm trees that were planted in the ground. I stopped messing with all that just so they didn't feel like messing with it in the wintertime anymore. But back then, it made sense to have all the different sensors so I could just open up my phone and see what was going on inside those greenhouses because sometimes it gets hot and you have to open them or you might need to insulate them a little bit better. So that's that. I don't need all that anymore. But this, this little thing right here, works wonderfully. I really like it a lot. The only thing I don't like about it is when you set it up, you can set your intervals for how often it refreshes and it's like 10 minutes, an hour, and then a day, I think, are the options. The more frequently you want it to uh, refresh, then the worse the battery life's going to be, obviously, and I set it to do every hour, which is fine, but when I just want to refresh it, it doesn't just refresh for me. So it's not like I can just pull open my phone and get exactly what's going on right at that moment. I have to wait for that hour to go by. I don't, I'm not really a huge fan of that, but otherwise, I really like it. It's only like, I think it was $16 on Cyber Monday. I think it might be $18 or $20 regular price. Great product, really like it. No, abrupt change. That's just, you know, the way things go around here. Whole point though, was that the low last night was only like, I don't know, 47 or something, and it didn't drop below 65 in here, so that's fine. Almost just tripped myself back there. But the low coming up, you know, I showed you my phone at the beginning of the video, that was from a couple days ago. Well, now that low is 14. It doesn't really matter, because I was gonna scoot the plants inside anyways. I still need to pull the plants out of the gorilla cart. They've been sitting in there for too long, so I need to put those away, then make room for the two windmill palms and the two mule palms, which the mule palms, those have gotten kind of big. I don't think those are going to fit here because they're this door, which usually the door is down, but if it needs to go up, then that, that's going to be a problem. Did I mention Fiddlehead finally starting to do its thing and do some moving over here on the Australian tree fern? I knew it wasn't dead. I knew it was just trying to trick me out, just being the complicated little diva that it always is. <laughs> Fun update here. I was just getting ready to bring the mule palms inside because it randomly dropped to 17 degrees out of nowhere. It's dropping down to 12, but this is, it's frozen. I can't get the thing. This has never happened before. I think I can still use this. I'm just not entirely certain. Yeah, well, I don't know. I'll make it work. They got to get inside somehow. <laughs> And that is steaming because it got frozen shut, so I had to pour boiling water over the top of it. Hopefully it didn't break it. Think I may have though, probably wasn't supposed to do that. Alright, got those plants moved in. I know that was very random and chaotic. It was just one of those things where I had to jump on it and get it done. It has actually been a few days since that last clip. By a few days I mean like, I don't know, five or six, something like that. So it's already warmed back up and I moved one of the windmill palms back out. I just haven't gotten around to getting this one back out. The mule palms. I suppose I could go ahead and move back out. I might wait just because there's some snow in the forecast. I'll wait and see what happens there. I did have to give these 
a very extreme prune. I said had to. I chose to. They were just so wide, and they don't need all the foliage on them during the winter time. I mean, they shouldn't be bare or anything like that, but it's not like they're photosynthesizing or doing any growing. They're just kind of hanging out and chilling. So it's not unusual for me to go ahead and give them a pretty heavy cut when I move them in for the winter time. And you know, and that kind of finishes things up because this video was supposed to be out on a Saturday. That's when I released my videos. This would have been on the 26th. Uh, at least it's when I released the vlogs anyways. But uh, that was when my family was doing our holiday celebration. I figure I should just go ahead and wrap this up so that I can release it at some point before things get too weird. If things go on too long, then that will be kind of weird having like all this weird holiday stuff going on in the videos when there's no holiday, like when it's New Year's. Why won't this focus? Come on, focus. So that way I'm not releasing a video after New Year's with all this Christmassy holiday stuff in it. Got a new, see this fiddlehead here popping out on the Australian tree fern? I'm relieved to see this because it had some cold damage. I had kind of figured that if I just made sure to give it some warmth and get it watered really well that it should spring back to life because they tend to be pretty tough like that, but it was one of those things where I was like, eh, never know. I know, I had just said that I was going to wrap this up, but I got distracted and wanted to show the new frond that's unfurling here from this very pretty but pain in the butt fern. Uh, hopefully the vlog that comes out after this one will be a little bit more um, cohesive. I mean, probably not, but we'll see. I don't have a lot planned for the week and I'll only be filming Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday to get that video up for Saturday. Y'all don't need, you do, nobody cares, it's fine. I did wanna say thank you to everybody for all of the support and uh, you know the passing of Tucker. It's very kind, tons and tons of comments. So sweet and I appreciate it. I hope you understand uh, that I just I couldn't reply. It's, just, it's too hard, but I really, I do appreciate it. So thank you for all of that support. It has been, uh, a not so fun few weeks, but things are getting much, much, much better. I feel much better now than I did a couple weeks ago, that's for sure. I am so ready to get back to playing with the plants. I really haven't done much of anything out here this month, like all of December, just because I was, I was taking care of the dog for the most part. That's what I was focused on the most and then had family in town and the holidays and all those things. And don't worry, everybody, stayed in the bubble for a couple of weeks and then got COVID tested and then we all made sure to stay together. We did the whole thing. It was just a few people. We're all very, very, very careful. Lots of germaphobes, lots of germ freaks. Nobody in my family is okay with cooties. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. Hopefully you enjoyed your holidays or still enjoying your holidays. There's still holidays happening. Even though Christmas is over, there's still things other people are doing. This box, has about 70 feet of eight millimeter plastic in it, greenhouse plastic or grow room plastic actually in it. And I think it's time for me to just say, forget it, trying to get the things that I was trying to get. I'll explain that when the time is right. It's time to just go ahead and get that stuff put up there. We'll talk about that next week or whenever I actually get around to getting that done. Again, thank you all so, so, so much for the support. I really appreciate it. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.